Book One of the Iliad by Homer, translated by Alexander Pope. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Book One, Argument. The contention of Achilles and Agamemnon. In the war of Troy, the Greeks, having sacked some of the neighboring towns and taken from thence two beautiful captives, Chryseis and Briseis, allotted the first to Agamemnon and the last to Achilles. Chryses, the father of Chryseis, and priest of Apollo, comes to the Grecian camp to ransom her, with which the action of the poem opens in the tenth year of the siege. The priest being refused and insolently dismissed by Agamemnon, entreats for vengeance from his god, who inflicts a pestilence on the Greeks. Achilles calls a council, and encourages Chalcus to declare the cause of it, who attributes it to the refusal of Chryseis. The king, being obliged to send back his captive, enters into a furious contest with Achilles, which Nestor pacifies. However, as he had the absolute command of the army, he seizes on Briseis in revenge. Achilles, in discontent, withdraws himself and his forces from the rest of the Greeks, and complaining to Thetis, she supplicates Jupiter to render them sensible of the wrong done to her son, by giving victory to the Trojans. Jupiter, granting her suit, incenses Juno, between whom the debate runs high, till they are reconciled by the address of Vulcan. The time of two and twenty days is taken up in this book, nine during the plague, one in the council and quarrel of the princes, and twelve for Jupiter's stay with the Ethiopians, at whose return Thetis prefers her petition. The scene lies in the Grecian camp, then changes to Chrysi, and lastly to Olympus. Achilles' wrath to Greece the direful spring of woes unnumbered, heavenly goddess, sing! That wrath which hurled to Pluto's gloomy reign the souls of mighty chiefs untimely slain, whose limbs unburied on the naked shore devouring dogs and hungry vultures tore. Since great Achilles and Atrides strove, such was the sovereign doom, and such the will of Jove. Declare, O muse, in what ill-fated hour sprung the fierce strife? From what offended power Latona's son a dire contagion spread, and heaped the camp with mountains of the dead? The king of men his reverent priest defied, and for the king's offence the people died. For Chryses sought with costly gifts to gain his captive daughter from the victor's chain. Suppliant the venerable father stands, Apollo's awful ensigns grace his hands. By these he begs, and lowly bending down, extends the sceptre and the laurel crown. He sued to all, but chief implored for grace the brother kings of Atreus' royal race. Ye kings and warriors, may your vows be crowned, and Troy's proud walls lie level with the ground. May Jove restore you when your toils are o'er, safe to the pleasures of your native shore. But, oh, relieve a wretched parent's pain, and give Chryseis to these arms again. If mercy fail, yet let my presence move, and dread avenging Phoebus, son of Jove. The Greeks in shouts their joint assent declare, the priest to reverence, and release the fair. Not so Atrides, he with kingly pride repulsed the sacred sire, and thus replied, Hence on thy life, and fly these hostile plains, nor ask, presumptuous, what the king detains. Hence, with thy laurel crown and golden rod, nor trust too far those ensigns of thy god. Mine is thy daughter, priest, and shall remain and prayers and tears and bribes shall plead in vain, till time shall rifle every youthful grace, and age dismiss her from my cold embrace, in daily labors of the loom employed, or doomed to deck the bed she once enjoyed. Hence, then, to Argos shall the maid retire, far from her native soil and weeping sire. Homer Invoking the Muse the trembling priest along the shore returned, and in the anguish of a father, mourned, disconsolate, not daring to complain, silent he wandered by the sounding main, till, safe at distance, to his God he prays, the God who darts around the world his rays. 
o smintheus sprung from fair latona's line thou guardian power of scylla the divine thou source of light whom tenedos adores and whose bright presence gilds thy crises shores if e'er with wreaths i hung thy sacred fane or fed the flames with fat of oxen slain god of the silver bow thy shafts employ avenge thy servant and the greeks destroy thus chryses prayed the favouring power attends and from olympus lofty tops descends bent was his bow the grecian hearts to wound fierce as he moved his silver shafts resound breathing revenge a sudden night he spread and gloomy darkness rolled about his head the fleet in view he twanged his deadly bow and hissing fly the feathered fates below on mules and dogs the infection first began and last the vengeful arrows fixed in man for nine long nights through all the dusky air the pyres thick flaming shot a dismal glare but ere the tenth revolving day was run inspired by juno that his godlike son convened to counsel all the grecian train for much the goddess mourned her heroes slain the assembly seated rising o'er the rest achilles thus the king of men addressed why leave we not the fatal trojan shore and measure back the seas we crossed before the plague destroying whom the sword would spare tis time to save the few remains of war but let some prophet or some sacred sage explore the cause of great apollo's rage or learn the wasteful vengeance to remove by mystic dreams for dreams descend from jove if broken vows this heavy curse have laid let altars smoke and hecatombs be paid so heaven atoned shall dying greece restore and phoebus dart his burning shafts no more he said and sat when chalcus thus replied chalcus the wise the grecian priest and guide that sacred seer whose comprehensive view the past the present and the future knew uprising slow the venerable sage thus spoke the prudence and the fears of age beloved of jove achilles wouldst thou know why angry phoebus bends his fatal bow first give thy faith and plight a prince's word of sure protection by thy power and sword for i must speak what wisdom would conceal and truths invidious to the great reveal bold is the task when subjects grown too wise instruct a monarch where his error lies for though we deem the short-lived fury past tis sure the mighty will revenge at last to whom polites from thy inmost soul speak what thou knowst and speak without control e'en by that god i swear who rules the day to whom thy hands the vows of greece convey and whose blessed oracles thy lips declare long as achilles breathes this vital air no daring greek of all the numerous band against his priest shall lift an impious hand not in the chief by whom our hosts are led the king of kings shall touch that sacred head encouraged thus the blameless man replies nor vows unpaid nor slighted sacrifice but he our chief provoked the raging pest apollo's vengeance for his injured priest nor will the gods awakened fury cease but plagues shall spread and funeral fires increase till the great king without a ransom paid to her own crisis send the black-eyed maid perhaps with added sacrifice and prayer the priest may pardon and the god may spare the prophet spoke when with a gloomy frown the monarch started from his shining throne black choler filled his breast that boiled with ire and from his eyeballs flashed the living fire augur accursed denouncing mischief still prophet of plagues for ever boding ill still must that tongue some wounding message bring and still thy priestly pride provoke thy king for this are phoebus oracles explored to teach the greeks to murmur at their lord for this with falsehood is my honour stained is heaven offended and a priest profaned because my prize my beauteous maid i hold and heavenly charms prefer to proffered gold a maid unmatched in manners as in face skilled in each art and crowned with every grace not half so dear were clytemnestra's charms when first her blooming beauties blessed my arms 
yet if the gods demand her let her sail our cares are only for the public weal let me be deemed the hateful cause of all and suffer rather than my people fall the prize the beauteous prize i will resign so dearly valued and so justly mine but since for common good i yield the fair my private loss let grateful greece repair nor unrewarded let your prince complain that he alone has fought and bled in vain insatiate king achilles thus replies fond of the power but fonder of the prize wouldst thou the greeks their lawful prey should yield the due reward of many a well-fought field the spoils of cities raised and warriors slain we share with justice as with toil we gain but to resume whate'er thy avarice craves that trick of tyrants may be borne by slaves yet if our chief for plunder only fight the spoils of ilion shall thy loss requite whene'er by jove's decree our conquering powers shall humble to the dust her lofty towers then thus the king shall i my prize resign with tame content and thou possessed of thine great as thou art and like a god in fight think not to rob me of a soldier's right at thy demand shall i restore the maid first let the just equivalent be paid such as a king might ask and let it be a treasure worthy her and worthy me or grant me this or with a monarch's claim this hand shall seize some other captive dame the mighty ajax shall his prize resign ulysses spoils or even thy own be mine the man who suffers loudly may complain and rage he may but he shall rage in vain but this when time requires it now remains we launch a bark to plough the watery plains and waft the sacrifice to Chryse's shores with chosen pilots and with labouring oars soon shall the fair the sable ship ascend and some deputed prince the charge attend this cretus king or ajax shall fulfil or wise ulysses he performed our will or if our royal pleasure shall ordain achilles self conduct her o'er the main let fierce achilles dreadful in his rage the god propitiate and the pest assuage mars at this pelides frowning stern replied o tyrant armed with insolence and pride inglorious slave to interest ever joined with fraud unworthy of a royal mind what generous greek obedient to thy word shall form an ambush or shall lift the sword what cause have i to war at thy decree the distant trojans never injured me to thea's realms no hostile troops they led safe in her vales my warlike coursers fed far hence removed the hoarse resounding main and walls of rock secure my native reign whose fruitful soil luxuriant harvests grace rich in her fruits and in her martial race hither we sailed a voluntary throng to avenge a private not a public wrong what else to troy the assembled nations draws but thine ungrateful and thy brother's cause is this the pay our blood and toils deserve disgraced and injured by the man we serve and darest thou threat to snatch my prize away due to the deeds of many a dreadful day a prize as small o tyrant matched with thine as thy own actions if compared to mine thine in each conquest is the wealthy prey though mine the sweat and danger of the day some trivial present to my ships i bear or barren praises pay the wounds of war but no proud monarch i'm thy slave no more my fleet shall waft me to thessalia's shore left by achilles on the trojan plain what spoils what conquest shall atrides gain to this the king fly mighty warrior fly thy aid we need not and thy threats defy there want not chiefs in such a cause to fight and jove himself shall guard a monarch's right of all the kings the gods distinguished care to power superior none should hatred bear strife and debate thy restless soul employ and wars and horrors are thy savage joy if thou hast strength twas heaven that strength bestowed for no vain man thy valour is from god haste launch thy vessels fly with speed away rule thy own realms with arbitrary sway i heed thee not but prize at equal rate thy short-lived friendship and thy groundless hate go threat thy earth-born myrmidons 
but here tis mine to threaten prince and thine to fear no if the god the beauteous dame demand my bark shall waft her to her native land but then prepare imperious prince prepare fierce as thou art to yield thy captive fair even in thy tent i'll seize the blooming prize thy loved briseis with the radiant eyes hence shalt thou prove my might and curse the hour thou stoodst a rival of imperial power and hence to all our hosts it shall be known that kings are subject to the gods alone achilles heard with grief and rage oppressed his heart swelled high and laboured in his breast distracting thoughts by turns his bosom ruled now fired by wrath and now by reason cooled that prompts his hand to draw the deadly sword force through the greeks and pierce their haughty lord this whispers soft his vengeance to control and calm the rising tempest of his soul just as in anguish of suspense he stayed while half unsheathed appeared the glittering blade minerva swift descended from above sent by the sister and the wife of jove for both the princes claimed her equal care behind she stood and by the golden hair achilles seized to him alone confessed a sable cloud concealed her from the rest he sees and sudden to the goddess cries known by the flames that sparkle from her eyes minerva repressing the fury of achilles descends minerva in her guardian care a heavenly witness of the wrongs i bear from atreus son then let those eyes that view the daring crime behold the vengeance too forbear the progeny of jove replies to calm thy fury i forsake the skies let great achilles to the gods resigned to reason yield the empire o'er his mind by awful juno this command is given the king and you are both the care of heaven the force of keen reproaches let him feel but she the obedient thy revenging steel for i pronounce and trust a heavenly power thy injured honour has its fated hour when the proud monarch shall thy arms implore and bribe thy friendship with a boundless store then let revenge no longer bear the sway command thy passions and the gods obey to her Pelides. with regardful ear tis just o goddess i thy dictates hear hard as it is my vengeance i suppress those who revere the gods the gods will bless he said observant of the blue-eyed maid then in the sheath returned the shining blade the goddess swift to high olympus flies and joins the sacred senate of the skies nor yet the rage his boiling breast forsook which thus redoubling on atrides broke o oh, monster mixed of insolence and fear thou dog in forehead but in heart a deer when wert thou known in ambushed fights to dare or nobly face the horrid front of war tis ours the chance of fighting fields to try thine to look on and bid the valiant die so much tis safer through the camp to go and rob a subject than despoil a foe scourge of thy people violent and base sent in jove's anger on a slavish race who lost to sense of generous freedom past are tamed to wrongs or this had been thy last now by this sacred sceptre hear me swear which never more shall leaves or blossoms bear which severed from the trunk as i from thee on the bare mountains left its parent tree this sceptre formed by tempered steel to prove an ensign of the delegates of jove from whom the power of laws and justice springs tremendous oath inviolate to kings by this i swear when bleeding greece again shall call achilles she shall call in vain when flushed with slaughter hector comes to spread the purple shore with mountains of the dead then shall thou mourn the affront thy madness gave forced to deplore when impotent to save then rage in bitterness of soul to know this act has made the bravest greek thy foe he spoke and furious hurled against the ground his sceptre starred with golden studs around then sternly silence sat with like disdain the raging king returned his frowns again 
to calm their passion with the words of age slow from his seat arose the pylian sage experienced nestor in persuasion skilled words sweet as honey from his lips distilled two generations now had passed away wise by his rules and happy by his sway two ages o'er his native realm he reigned and now the example of the third remained all viewed with awe the venerable man who thus with mild benevolence began what shame what woe is this to greece what joy to troy's proud monarch and the friends of troy that adverse gods commit to stern debate the best the bravest of the grecian state young as ye are this youthful heat restrain nor think your nestor's years and wisdom vain a godlike race of heroes once i knew such as no more these aged eyes shall view lives there a chief to match pirithus fame dryas the bold or Ceneus, deathless name thresius endued with more than mortal might or polyphemus like the gods in fight with these of old to toils of battle bred in early youth my hardy days i led fired with the thirst which virtuous envy breeds and smit with love of honourable deeds strongest of men they pierced the mountain boar ranged the wild deserts red with monsters gore and from their hills the shaggy centaurs tore yet these with soft persuasive arts i swayed when nestor spoke they listened and obeyed if in my youth even these esteemed me wise do you young warriors hear my age advise atrides seize not on the beauteous slave that prize the greeks by common suffrage gave nor thou achilles treat our prince with pride let kings be just and sovereign power preside thee the first honours of the war adorn like gods in strength and of a goddess born him awful majesty exalts above the powers of earth and sceptred sons of jove let both unite with well-consenting mind so shall authority with strength be joined leave me o king to calm achilles rage rule thou thyself as more advanced in age forbid it gods achilles should be lost the pride of greece and bulwark of our host this said he ceased the king of men replies thy years are awful and thy words are wise but that imperious that unconquered soul no laws can limit no respect control before his pride must his superiors fall his word the law and he the lord of all him must our hosts our chiefs ourself obey what king can bear a rival in his sway grant that the gods his matchless force have given has foul reproach a privilege from heaven here on the monarch's speech achilles broke and furious thus and interrupting spoke tyrant i well deserved thy galling chain to live thy slave and still to serve in vain should i submit to each unjust decree command thy vassals but command not me seize on briseis whom the grecians doomed my prize of war yet tamely see resumed and seize secure no more achilles draws his conquering sword in any woman's cause the gods command me to forgive the past but let this first invasion be the last for know thy blood when next thou darest invade shall stream in vengeance on my reeking blade at this they ceased the stern debate expired the chiefs in sullen majesty retired achilles with patroclus took his way where near his tents his hollow vessels lay meantime atrides launched with numerous oars a well-rigged ship for chryses sacred shores high on the deck was fair chryseis placed and sage ulysses with the conduct graced safe in her sides the hecatomb they stowed then swiftly sailing cut the liquid road the host to expiate next the king prepares with pure lustrations and with solemn prayers washed by the briny wave the pious train are cleansed and cast the ablutions in the main along the shore whole hecatombs were laid and bulls and goats to phoebus altars paid the sable fumes in curling spires arise and waft their grateful odours to the skies the army thus in sacred rites engaged atrides still with deep resentment raged to wait his will two sacred heralds stood 
talthebius and euripides the good haste to the fierce achilles tent he cries thence bear briseis as our royal prize submit he must or if they will not part ourself in arms shall tear her from his heart the unwilling heralds act their lord's commands pensive they walk along the barren sands arrived the hero in his tent they find with gloomy aspect on his arm reclined at awful distance long they silent stand loath to advance and speak their hard command decent confusion this the godlike man perceived and thus with accent mild began with leave and honour enter our abodes ye sacred ministers of men and gods i know your message by constraint you came not you but your imperious lord i blame patroclus haste the fair briseis bring conduct my captive to the haughty king but witness heralds and proclaim my vow witness to gods above and men below but first and loudest to your prince declare that lawless tyrant whose commands you bear unmoved as death achilles shall remain though prostrate greece shall bleed at every vein the raging chief in frantic passion lost blind to himself and useless to his host unskilled to judge the future by the past in blood and slaughter shall repent at last the departure of briseis from the tent of achilles patroclus now the unwilling beauty brought she in soft sorrows and in pensive thought passed silent as the heralds held her hand and oft looked back slow moving o'er the strand not so his loss the fierce achilles bore but sad retiring to the sounding shore o'er the wild margin of the deep he hung that kindred deep from whence his mother sprung there bathed in tears of anger and disdain thus loud lamented to the stormy main o parent goddess since in early bloom thy son must fall by too severe a doom sure to so short a race of glory born great jove in justice should this ban adorn honour and fame at least the thunderer owed and ill he pays the promise of a god if yon proud monarch thus thy son defies obscures my glories and resumes my prize far from the deep recesses of the main where aged ocean holds his watery reign the goddess mother heard the waves divide and like a mist she rose above the tide beheld him mourning on the naked shores and thus the sorrows of his soul explores why griefs my son thy anguish let me share reveal the cause and trust a parent's care he deeply sighing said to tell my woe is but to mention what too well you know from Thebe, sacred to Apollo's name, Achen's realm, our conquering army came. With treasure loaded and triumphant spoils, Whose just division crowned the soldiers' toils, But bright Chryseis, heavenly prize, Was led, by vote selected, to the general's bed. The priest of Phoebus sought by gifts To gain his beauteous daughter from the victor's chain. The fleet he reached and lowly bending down Held forth the sceptre and the laurel crown, entreating all but chief implored for grace the brother kings of atreus royal race the generous greeks their joint consent declare the priest to reverence and release the fair not so atrides he with wonted pride the sire insulted and his gifts denied the insulted sire his god's peculiar care to phoebus prayed and phoebus heard the prayer a dreadful plague ensues the avenging darts incessant fly and pierce the grecian hearts a prophet then inspired by heaven arose and points the crime and thence derives the woes myself the first the assembled chiefs incline to avert the vengeance of the power divine then rising in his wrath the monarch stormed incensed he threatened and his threats performed the fair chryseis to her sire was sent with offered gifts to make the god relent but now he sees briseis heavenly charms and of my valour's prize defrauds my arms defrauds the votes of all the grecian train and service faith and justice plead in vain but goddess thou thy suppliant son attend to high olympus shining court ascend urge all the ties to former service owed and sue for vengeance to the thundering god 
oft hast thou triumphed in the glorious boast that thou stoodst forth of all the ethereal host when bold rebellion shook the realms above the undaunted guard of cloud-compelling jove when the bright partner of his awful reign the warlike maid and monarch of the main the traitor gods by mad ambition driven durst threat with chains the omnipotence of heaven then called by thee the monster titan came whom gods briareus men aegeon name through wandering skies enormous stalked along not he that shakes the solid earth so strong with giant pride at jove's high throne he stands and brandished round him all his hundred hands the affrighted gods confessed their awful lord they dropped the fetters trembled and adored this goddess this to his remembrance call embrace his knees at his tribunal fall conjure him far to drive the grecian train to hurl them headlong to their fleet and main to heap the shores with copious death and bring the greeks to know the curse of such a king let agamemnon lift his haughty head o'er all his wide dominion of the dead and mourn in blood that e'er he durst disgrace the boldest warrior of the grecian race thetis calling briareus to the assistance of jupiter unhappy son fair thetis thus replies while tears celestial trickle from her eyes why have i borne thee with a mother's throes to fates averse and nursed for future woes so short a space the light of heaven to view so short a space and filled with sorrow too oh might a parent's careful wish prevail far far from ilion should thy vessel sail and thou from camps remote the danger shun which now alas too nearly threats my son yet what i can to move thy suit i'll go to great olympus crowned with fleecy snow meantime secure within thy ships from far behold the field not to mingle in the war the sire of gods and all the ethereal train on the warm limits of the farthest main now mix with mortals nor disdain to grace the feasts of ethiopia's blameless race twelve days the powers indulge the genial rite returning with the twelfth revolving light then will i mount the brazen dome and move the high tribunal of immortal jove the goddess spoke the rolling waves unclose then down the steep she plunged from whence she rose and left him sorrowing on the lonely coast in wild resentment for the fair he lost in chryses port now sage ulysses rode beneath the deck the destined victims stowed the sails they furled they lashed the mast aside and dropped their anchors and the pinnace tied next on the shore their hecatomb they land chryseis last descending on the strand her thus returning from the furrowed main ulysses led to phoebus sacred fane where at his solemn altar as the maid he gave to chryses thus the hero said hail reverend priest to phoebus awful dome a suppliant i from great atrides come unransomed here receive the spotless fair accept the hecatomb the greeks prepare and may thy god who scatters darts around atoned by sacrifice desist to wound at this the sire embraced the maid again so sadly lost so lately sought in vain then near the altar of the darting king disposed in rank their hecatomb they bring with water purify their hands and take the sacred offering of the salted cake while thus with arms devoutly raised in air and solemn voice the priest directs his prayer god of the silver bow thy ear incline whose power encircles scylla the divine whose sacred eye thy tenedos surveys and gilds fair chrysi with distinguished rays if fired to vengeance at thy priest's request thy direful darts inflict the raging pest once more attend avert the wasteful woe and smile propitious and unbend thy bow so chrysis prayed apollo heard his prayer and now the greeks their hecatomb prepare between their horns the salted barley threw and with their heads to heaven the victims slew the limbs they sever from the enclosing hide the thighs selected to the gods divide on these in double calls involved with art the choicest morsels lay from every part the priest himself before his altar stands and burns the offering with his holy hands pours the black wine and sees the flames aspire 
the youth with instruments surround the fire the thighs thus sacrificed and entrails dressed the assistants part transfix and roast the rest then spread the tables the repast prepare each takes his seat and each receives his share when now the rage of hunger was repressed with pure libations they conclude the feast the youths with wine the copious goblets crowned and pleased dispense the flowing bowls around with hymns divine the joyous banquet ends the pans lengthened till the sun descends the greeks restored the grateful notes prolong apollo listens and approves the song twas night the chiefs beside their vessel lie till rosy morn had purpled o'er the sky then launch and hoist the mast indulgent gales supplied by phoebus fill the swelling sails the milk-white canvas bellying as they blow the parted ocean foams and roars below above the bounding billows swift they flew till now the grecian camp appeared in view far on the beach they haul their bark to land the crooked keel divides the yellow sand then part where stretched along the winding bay the ships and tents in mingled prospect lay but raging still amidst his navy sat the stern achilles steadfast in his hate nor mixed in combat nor in council joined but wasting cares lay heavy on his mind in his black thoughts revenge and slaughter roll and scenes of blood rise dreadful in his soul twelve days were past and now the dawning light the gods had summoned to the olympian height jove first ascending from the watery bowers leads the long order of ethereal powers when like the morning mist in early day rose from the flood the daughter of the sea and to the seats divine her flight addressed there far apart and high above the rest the thunderer sat where old olympus shrouds his hundred heads in heaven and props the clouds suppliant the goddess stood one hand she placed beneath his beard and one his knees embraced if arrow father of the gods she said my words could please thee or my actions aid some marks of honour on my son bestow and pay in glory what in life you owe fame is at least by heavenly promise due to life so short and now dishonoured too avenge this wrong o oh, ever just and wise let greece be humbled and the trojans rise till the proud king and all the achaean race shall heap with honours him they now disgrace thetis entreating jupiter to honor achilles thus thetis spoke but jove in silence held the sacred counsels of his breast concealed not so repulsed the goddess closer pressed still grasped his knees and urged the dear request o sire of gods and men thy suppliant here refuse or grant for what has jove to fear or o oh, declare of all the powers above is wretched that is least the care of jove she said and sighing thus the god replies who rolls the thunder o'er the vaulted skies what hast thou asked ah why should jove engage in foreign contests and domestic rage the gods complaints and juno's fierce alarms while i too partial aid the trojan arms go lest the haughty partner of my sway with jealous eyes thy close access survey but part in peace secure thy prayer is sped witness the sacred honours of our head the nod that ratifies the will divine the faithful fixed irrevocable sign this seals thy suit and this fulfils thy vows he spoke and awful bends his sable brows shakes his ambrosial curls and gives the nod the stamp of fate and sanction of the god high heaven with trembling the dread signal took and all olympus to the centre shook swift to the seas profound the goddess flies jove to his starry mansions in the skies the shining synod of the immortals wait the coming god and from their thrones of state arising silent wrapped in holy fear before the majesty of heaven appear trembling they stand while jove assumes the throne all but the god's imperious queen alone late had she viewed the silver-footed dame and all her passions kindled into flame say artful manager of heaven she cries who now partakes the secrets of the skies 
thy juno knows not the decrees of fate in vain the partner of imperial state what favourite goddess then those cares divides which jove in prudence from his consort hides to this the thunderer seek not thou to find the sacred counsels of almighty mind involved in darkness likes the great decree nor can the depths of fate be pierced by thee what fits thy knowledge thou the first shalt know the first of gods above and men below but thou nor they shall search the thoughts that roll deep in the close recesses of my soul full on the sire the goddess of the skies rolled the large orbs of her majestic eyes and thus returned austere oh, saturnius say from whence this wrath or who controls thy sway thy boundless will for me remains in force and all thy counsels take the destined course but tis for greece i fear for late was seen in close consult the silver-footed queen jove to his thetis nothing could deny nor was the signal vain that shook the sky what fatal favour has the goddess won to grace her fierce inexorable son perhaps in grecian blood to drench the plain and glut his vengeance with my people slain then thus the god o restless fate of pride that strives to learn what heaven resolves to hide vain is the search presumptuous and abhorred anxious to thee and odious to thy lord let this suffice the immutable decree no force can shake what is that ought to be goddess submit nor dare our will withstand but dread the power of this avenging hand the united strength of all the gods above in vain resists the omnipotence of jove vulcan the thunderer spoke nor durst the queen reply a reverent horror silenced all the sky the feast disturbed with sorrow vulcan saw his mother menaced and the gods in awe peace at his heart and pleasure his design thus interposed the architect divine the wretched quarrels of the mortal state are far unworthy gods of your debate let men their days in senseless strife employ we in eternal peace and constant joy thou goddess mother with our sire comply nor break the sacred union of the sky lest roused to rage he shake the blessed abodes launch the red lightning and dethrone the gods if you submit the thunderer stands appeased the gracious power is willing to be pleased thus vulcan spoke and rising with a bound the double bowl with sparkling nectar crowned which held to juno in a cheerful way goddess he cried be patient and obey dear as you are if jove his arm extend i can but grieve unable to defend what god so daring in your aid to move or lift his hand against the force of jove once in your cause i felt his matchless might hurled headlong down from the ethereal height tossed all the day in rapid circles round nor till the sun descended touched the ground breathless i fell in giddy motion lost the Sintians raised me on the lemnian coast he said and to her hands the goblet heaved which with a smile the white-armed queen received then to the rest he filled and in his turn each to his lips applied the nectared urn vulcan with awkward grace his office plies and unextinguished laughter shakes the skies thus the blessed gods the genial day prolong in feasts ambrosial and celestial song apollo tuned the lyre the muses round with voice alternate aid the silver sound meantime the radiant sun to mortal sight descending swift rolled down the rapid light then to their starry domes the gods depart the shining monuments of vulcan's art jove on his couch reclined his awful head and juno slumbered on the golden bed End of book one.